Hey guys, welcome back and today Xiaomi started rolling out the official stable Android Pi update for every Mi A2 user. This is a very surprising move from Xiaomi as we only got the closed beta update just a week back and it looks like Xiaomi has been testing the update internally for quite some time. Anyways, this is the official OT update of size 1067.7 MB and if you check the change log, the new features include adaptive battery and brightness, simple ways to navigate your phone, it's nothing but Pi gestures and recommended apps and actions based based on your context. To install this update, you don't need unlocked bootloader or routing. All you need to do is go to settings, system tab, system updates and check for updates. One thing to note is that you need to be on the latest November patch to get the Pi OTA. Actually Xiaomi released two OTA updates this month apart from the Pi release, one with the version 9.6.16.0 with October 30 build date and the other 50.5 MB update with version 9.6.17.0 with November 8 build date. The only visual change 9.6.17.0 update brings to your phone is the about phone tab at the top of the settings panel. So make sure you install the second 50 MB update too and then start checking for the Pi update. So we are done booting up the phone, first let me go to settings about phone, as you can see android version is 9 Pi, build number is 10.0.1.0 which is same as the leaked beta version with November 5 security patch and the build date is November 9. Talking about the changes, I have made a dedicated video comparing each and every new feature in the Pi that has been changed compared to Oreo, you can check the link in the video description for detailed comparison. Anyways, first we have the new settings panel with colored icons, redesigned quick toggle and no notification panel. Not much of a change but the quick toggles are circular now. The launcher has been changed, now it is the quick step launcher which has google search bar at the bottom with a dedicated google assistant button and quick search feature. Date, date and weather info at the top and to the left we have the google now screen. This is the app drawer which has recently installed apps at the top with all apps section below that and now the app drawer also supports app shortcuts and the launcher can also be used in landscape mode. Next there is an option to automatically tone off the hotspot when no devices are connected, definitely a good thing helps in conserving the battery. Now there is an updated DND mode under notifications and sound tab. Here you can customize the behavior of sound and vibration like individually for alarms, media and touch sounds, customize notifications like no sound and visuals or just no sound from notifications and you can also add custom restrictions. Next you can add exceptions for calls, text, events and reminders, set duration and turn it on or off automatically. And the notification tab now also includes information about the most recent app notifications and here you can turn the notifications on or off for specific app and this feature is part of digital well-being just like the DND mode. About the digital well-being, you can sign up as a beta tester and update it from Play Store which includes features like time spent on apps, timer for apps, window on feature which turns the entire screen to grey. Also if you check the Google Play Store updates, there are updates for apps like action services which add smart predictions across Android, digital well-being and a standalone Google Lens app. This is the new volume slider which controls the media volume by default and under sound settings you can adjust the call volume too and select media output to either speaker or bluetooth keeping the external device connection intact. Next we have the new Pi gestures, settings tab, system tab, gestures and there is swipe up on home button which transforms the on screen navigation bar to swipe up gestures. Under battery tab you have auto battery saved mode which can be set from 5 to 75%, adaptive battery which helps to limit battery for apps you don't use often. Next under display tab you have theming option which can be set to either automatic or force the system UI to dark or light theme. Next you have lockdown feature when you go to security and location tab, lock screen preferences and here you can enable or disable lockdown option being shown in the power menu. Do note that this option only shows up if you have a screen lock or FP unlock set on your phone. And finally there is manual landscape or portrait mode. With auto rotate turned off you can manually turn your screen to portrait mode or landscape mode by hitting the rotate icon in the swipe up nav bar. So that's it the ROM has been stable, no issues with the network, Wi-Fi, calls, VLT, everything is working, Bluetooth is fine for calls and media, all sensors are working. The camera app is the same, nothing changed and the camera to API is still disabled. Gaming experience is good, I have tried playing PUBG for a while, no issues with touch but the game ran fine only with medium graphic settings. About the benchmarks, N2 version 7 score is 1,22,471, Geekbench 4 single core score is 1,619 and multi core score is 4,546. So that is it, go ahead, download the update and install it and do let me know if you are liking the new update or not in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I will see you all soon in my next video.